in Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 18. It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were, what, fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. So here's uh, two brothers, right? They have, their, they have their fishing business. Jesus says, Follow me. They, they right away followed Jesus, left their nets, right? <laughs> and going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Uh, so Jesus called John and, John and James, another, uh, they, were, they were two brothers, and they had a, a fishing business with their father, right? And Jesus called them and immediately left, their, they left the ship behind and left their father behind. Amen. Uh, Jesus called them and they followed. Uh, but Jesus uh, called them to be fishers of men. And, uh, you know, uh, I, that's what I love about the Gospels and about Christ is when he would teach, he would use uh, everyday uh, illustrations, right? And uh, here we have uh, fishing for men, right? I'm going to use this illustration today. Uh, reaching the world with the Gospel is fishing for men, right? And, uh, you know, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So we want to compare fishing for a fish with fishing for men. <laughs> uh, how many of you like fishing? First of all, we should ask that question, right? If, if you don't like fishing, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the message is all about fishing. Uh, but we're going to compare it to, the, to reaching uh, people with the gospel. But in order to catch fish, uh, there first has to be a what? A fisherman, right? There's a lot of fish in the sea. Uh, have you noticed that the fish don't just jump out of the water onto the shore so you can collect them and, and take them home and eat them, right? Even in your boats, right? When you're out there fishing in a boat, they don't jump in your boat and you know, say, here I am, <laughs> take me. No, uh, there has to be a fisherman. Someone has to cast the net. Someone has to drop the line. Uh, Romans 10, 14 says, how shall they hear without a what? A preacher. The preacher is the fisherman. Uh, if we're going to catch men, then we need fishers of men. And believers, you and I are the fishermen. Okay, we, we're the ones that, that have to go and catch the fish. And that brings me to point two. The fisherman has to go to where the fish are, right? Uh, in Greenland, there's lots of different fish uh, in different areas and different waters, right? Uh, there's places that have lots of fish. Uh, so uh, there's naturally uh, you know, more people fishing in that area. It's easily accessible. And in our town, uh, there's, there's a lot of people that fish by boat. And uh, but then there's also those remote places, right, that have a few fish. Uh, you know, you have to go to the mountains, right, and go to the, and find those, uh, those rivers and those lakes to get, you know, the mountain trout. Uh, but, you know, to, the, to that fisherman, it's worth it to go to those places. You know, they're not easily accessible, but it's worth it to go to those places and catch those fish, right? And it's the same thing with missions. Uh, there's places where, you know, it, maybe it's easy, easily accessible to, to take the gospel to people. And then there's places where, you know, the countries are closed, places like uh, commun commun uh, communist countries like China, right? Uh, hard places that, how about the Middle East? Hard places to get in. Uh, there's remote places like Greenland. Uh, you know, that's what I always think of Greenland. You know, just such a remote place, a hard place to get into, but God opened the door, amen? And uh, we're there fishing now, right? Um, you know, sometimes maybe you don't see, uh, you know, uh, a lot of fruit in these uh, remote places because it takes time, uh, you know, but uh, there are fish being caught, <laughs> hey, right? Amen? Um, you know, so we all, we all might not go to the mission field, but we all go fishing. Right? You don't have to go to uh, Greenland to be a fisherman. Uh, you, you could be a fisherman right here. You need to be a fisherman right here. That's the, it's commanded. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to what? Every creature. Okay, that's, that's uh, the American and that's the Greenlander. Every creature. Uh, now, there are different methods or different methods are used for catching uh, different fish. Okay? But it's still what? Fishing. <laughs> right? Uh, when we fish for men, sometimes we might use different methods. There's different people, different cultures, different places, uh, but it's the same message, right? Different methods, but same message, amen? Uh, on the co west coast of Greenland, where we live, there's lots of galalic, which is halibut. How many of you, how many are familiar with halibut, right? It's a part of the uh, flounder family, right? A flat fish, uh, live at the bottom of the sea. Um, now, the way they catch halibut in, uh, in Greenland uh, by boat, when they're, by, when they're out in their boat, they actually have a long line they drop down to the bottom of the sea. And there's some places where this, the sea can almost be a mile deep. So they got to drop this long line because uh, the halibut, they, they're uh, bottom feeders. They're at the bottom of, of, the, of the sea. And uh, on that line, long line, 
they have another long line. So they, you think about it, you see a boat, they have a long line all the way going down to the bottom of the, of, the, of the sea. And then on that line, it's stretched out. They have another line stretched out. They have to get it stretched out on the bottom of the sea. And there's some uh, lines that have thousands of hooks. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 I don't know how, they've, how they figured that out, how to do that, but it's amazing, isn't it? And, uh, you know, and then on that long line, or those, you know, there's, on those, those 2,000 hooks, or some, you know, some might only have 500 hooks, but, you know, their hooks are about every, every meter apart. Uh, so you can think of, just think about that. And on these boats, they have uh, a hydraulic uh, line a reel that reels the line in automatically. So, so it's, you know, it sounds like a big operation, doesn't it? Um, but really, when you, when, you, when you see the fishermen out there, it's just usually one, maybe two guys in a boat, in a small boat, you know, just a, uh, not here, that's not the picture, but a small boat, 19 foot open boat. And, uh, you know, we call it maybe a dinghy here in English. <laughs> uh, but there they are catching uh, sometimes a ton of fish in, in one day. <laughs> Um, but these small boats um, many times remind me again of missions, right? Uh, many times we just see one or two going out there fishing for men, you know, and sometimes it doesn't look like much, <laughs> uh, but one person sold out for God can, can, can do something, right? Can make a difference, amen? And, you know, even here in America, sometimes, you know, the church visitation, there's only one or two out. You know, and you, you know, sometimes if you, you, you uh, think, man, you know, uh, you know, you get lonely, right? <laughs> um, that's why it's good when the whole church gets involved, amen? Whole church gets involved in missions. That, that's what we want. That's our desire, right? The whole church to be involved in catching uh, and fishing for men. Uh, but we have the halibut. We also have uh, the, did I click it? I think I clicked it. We'll see in a second here. We have the elkaluk or the Arctic char, the mountain trout. And, uh, okay, and then of course you have to go uh, where they are, right? <laughs> uh, they're, they're in the, uh, the lakes, they're swimming upstream. Um, you know, those ones, once again, you don't catch uh, lots at one time. You don't drop a long line and catch, you know, hundreds of them, right? You have to go the rod, <laughs> catch one at a time. Uh, once again, you know, different, different uh, methods, right, for catching fish. Uh, but the same, it's still fishing, right? And when we, re when we reach people with the gospel, uh, sometimes, you know, there's different ways of doing it, but we're still getting them the gospel message. And we'll talk about that in a second. But then we also have another fish in Greenland, the Yamaset or the Capelin, I think in English it's called. Um, these are tiny little fish that uh, come up the coast of Greenland every summer. And they'll come up in millions. I don't know if it's, gonna, it's a video, it might not work, but there's millions, millions that come up the coast in Greenland during the summers. We'll give it one more second. If it doesn't work, I have a picture of them too. Um, but these, these fish, do um, you know how they catch these fish? How they bait, bait uh, the, uh, what do they use for bait, I should ask? Anyone have any idea except for my kids, of course? Popcorn. What's that? Popcorn. <laughs> That's a good guess. <laughs> no? They're just little fish. Let me go to the next picture here. Anyone, everyone familiar with Capelin? Because I, I, I didn't even know what, the, I had to try to figure out what, what kind of fish they were in English. Um, but they're small, small fish. Silvery, when, when the lights hit them, they're kind of, you know, have a silvery look to them. Uh, but they use uh, yogurt. <laughs> uh, they pour yogurt into the water. And of course, they come, up across, they come up the coast, so you, know, you can get really close to them. You can also be in a boat and catch them. But they'll, um, they'll put yogurt, and then uh, they'll mix yogurt with water, you know, so they can make it last longer. And then the fish will just come up to the, right, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of yogurt. I think just plain. <laughs> And uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, it's pretty fun to watch. Christopher, he, he, was, he was involved in that. But here's what they look like close up. Uh, when they, the, the people will actually, the, the native people eat them. They'll dry them. You don't, you don't clean the fish. You just dry them and eat them. We had a boy one day come to church, uh, you know, with his, uh, with his fish. <laughs> it reminded me of the story, you know, the, the, the lad that had the five, the five loaves and two fishes. And uh, so he came uh, with, his, with his fish. And they were just dried fish, and he's eating them after church. We have little, like little, um, you know, coffee and cookies and things, and he's eating them there. And there's, you know, the guts are going everywhere because it's dried guts. Uh, and then he's offering it to our kids and everything. I don't know if they if they had any of that. Uh, but uh, these fish, you know, it's kind of funny. They fish. These fish remind remind me of children. You know, we're talking about different methods of reaching people. Uh, Jesus says, "Suffer the little children to come unto me." Uh, but uh, these little fish, you know, you actually they actually you'll use these fish also for for baiting uh, to get the bigger fish. Uh, but, you know, I think about children, you know, it, it's, it's a lot easier to get children uh, to church <laughs> in many places. Uh, you know, you have vacation Bible school, vacation Bible time, or you have, you know, uh, uh, we have a children's club in Greenland. And, uh, you know, it just seems like it's easier to get the children to come out. 
we don't use yogurt. Sometimes we use ice cream. <laughs> no. uh, but the kids, children come out, you know, and uh, you know, we, sometimes you gotta do, use different, different methods to get them out. But when they come out, guess what, what you're doing? You're giving them the gospel. <laughs> uh, they're memorizing the scripture. And you know, that's one of my favorite things is hearing the children in Greenland uh, quoting Bible verses in their own language that they would never quote if it wasn't for us being there. You know, and planting all that seed, the gospel seed in their hearts, amen. Um, there's also uh, fishing with a trawler. Uh, that, when I think about it, fishing with a trawler, you know, that's more of an established, you know, I mean, that's the, that's the big fishing, right? They, they drag that net and they're, you know, they're taking in all kinds of fish, maybe shrimp, you know, and that reminds me a lot of times of, of local churches, right? A established ministry, you know, and, and doing so much, you know, reaching the Jerusalem, reaching around the world, right? Uh, but fishing, right? And we're talking about fishing. Uh, but remember, uh, uh, a church is not judged by size, but by its reach, right? So we don't look at a church as, oh man, that's a big church, thousand people. How, what, where's your reach? Uh, there's a lot of churches that, that might be bigger than this one, but a lot of times they just focus on themselves. Uh, but then uh, there's small churches. Most of our supporting churches are small churches. And they're reaching their own Jerusalem, and they're reaching their area, their country, and then they're reaching the world through missions, amen? And uh, we all need to be involved in missions. But, but just to give you some, some different methods we may use, uh, but the same gospel message, what about giving out tracts, right? Uh, that, that's a, a proven uh, method, amen, getting the gospel out. You know, you cannot wait for the people to come to church. I hope you realize that. So you're sending missionaries to a pioneer mission field. We can't just sit in the building waiting for people to come. Amen. We have to get out there, and we've got we to gotta get them in the house, the church house. But actually, we, most of the time, we give them the gospel before they ever, ever even come into the church house. You realize that. We're going out. We have to make friends with people. I'm getting ahead of myself. But giving out tracts, knocking on doors, of course, another way uh, to get the gospel out, to, to fish for men. You know, even a sign. <laughs> it sounds funny, but we... we uh, we lived in a house for a while, our own house, our, our house, it was a small house, 900 square foot, and uh, we lived right next door to Jehovah Witnesses. So nobody would come, you know, uh, it was hard to get people, they thought we were Jehovah Witnesses. And then the Lord provided us with a small building, 2,000 square foot, which is um, in the Arctic, that's a big building. <laughs> and uh, we were living in there for years and had, had uh, part of it was for the church. But when we uh, put a sign up, uh, we started having people come to church, amen? <laughs> Uh, one time we put a message on Facebook in Greenlandic and somebody wanted to see, you know, what was going on at the church. They came out, right? So many different methods, right? And I, where I was getting with that is about be, befriending people is one of the best ways. You know that? If you can get out in the community, befriend people. Like your pastor, you can't rely on your pastor to, to, to reach all your friends or your family. That's your job, right? But you get out in the community and you, you get to know people and they get to know you. They, they, they see there's something different about you. And then it opens up the door for you to give the gospel and witness to them. And as I was saying, there's so many times in Greenland uh, you know, that we have given the gospel before the people have ever even come to the, to the, to the actual building, right? But we need to go fishing, right? Um, I don't think this video is going to work, but we'll try it again. Uh, but, um, oh, this one might work. Do I hit, do I hit it again, make it, make it play? No, oh, no, it's fine. What the video is, it's uh, actually uh, men fishing in the, in the uh, north, northern part of Greenland. They're fishing, they, ice fishing. They put a little hole in the ice and are fishing and you know what they caught you can see a little bit here they call it a shark 13 foot greenlandic shark and um the hole was too long too small right <laughs> uh they so they had to make the hole bigger before they could pull the shark out uh but you know i uh, think about you know uh, we when we drop the line the gospel net we never know what we're going to catch right uh we don't know what we're going to catch on that line but if you don't drop the line you know you're not going to catch anything amen And if you're listening in Greenlandic, he's saying, it's really, really big. <laughs> uh, uh, but once again, if you understand, if you don't drop the net, you won't catch anything. If you don't go fishing, you're not going to catch anything. So we all need to be part of, of fishing. And that could go on and on. You know, we could talk, look at Jesus, uh, the different methods he used, right? The woman at the well, I mean, he was pretty direct, wasn't he? He's like, you're pretty much, you know, you're living in sin, right? <laughs> uh, you need to get saved, right? And she got saved. And then we got the woman, the woman caught in adultery. Jesus was a little more compassionate with her, I, I think. Uh, but she still got saved, amen? Uh, you know, we use different, sometimes, you know, you, you got to ask the Lord to lead you how to deal with different people. Uh, I think about John the Baptist, you know, and you look at Jesus and John the Baptist, right? Uh, they were preaching the same message, amen? Uh, John the Baptist, though, uh, was, a, was a, a Nazarite from birth, right? So he, he looked rough, right? He had the long hair. Uh, he was not allowed to touch uh, the fruit of the, of the, wine, of the vine, right? Uh, he was out in the wilderness preaching, right? <laughs> and then there's Jesus, right? Um, you know, he, he was completely opposite, right? 
He, he, was, in the, he was in the cities, in the, in the villages, with the people, right? Uh, but they both were preaching the same exact uh, message, amen? And, uh, you know, we can see that throughout the Bible. You know, we're all different, aren't we? And, uh, but God wants to use each and every one of us in, in his work of fishing for men. Uh, another thing about fishing that uh, requires dedication and determination, amen? <laughs> Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and where I'm going with that is it, it's, it, fishing is hard work. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. A lot of people are sleeping, aren't they, <laughs> spiritually? Uh, I'm talking about Christians. Uh, the world is, is dying and going to hell, and a lot of Christians are lazy, right? They don't want to work. Uh, but if you're going to fish, it's going to require a lot of work, isn't it? A lot of determination, too, and dedication. Uh, you know, the fisherman has to get up early in the morning. Now, do you think in Greenland, when they get up early in the morning and they see some snow flurries, do you think they say, oh, I'm not fishing today? <laughs> you know, they wouldn't fish for nine months out of the year. Uh, that's not much of a livelihood, right? If you don't work for nine months out of the year. Uh, you know, sometimes they fish in uh, very cold temperatures. And this, I, actually, I do some ice fishing. This is me, if you're wondering. <laughs> uh, I do some ice fishing with a friend in Greenland. And uh, this past year was the coldest that I've ever experienced it. It was a minus 47 with the wind chill. And uh, that's, that's cold, if you're wondering. <laughs> that's very cold. Uh, sometimes the harbor freezes the boats in. And uh, you, can hit, you can hit play if, uh, if, you're, if you're able to hit play there. Sometimes the harbor freezes the boats in. And what do you think they do? Do you think they quit and say, oh, I'm not going out today? No. What they'll do is they'll actually push their boats. And here they're actually using a boat to pull it. They'll uh, push or pull their boats right into the harbor. <laughs> Doesn't stop them. Um, other times, oh, oh, actually when they're done fishing, when they're done fishing, you can hit play if you want to. When they're done fishing, they'll just drive their boats right up on, onto the ice again. Now there's lazy fishermen who just leave their boats out there and their boats get frozen in, frozen into the harbor. And of course that, that can damage your boat. <laughs> um, what about when the, uh, when the harbor and the bay freeze over? You think they just quit then and get done, done fishing? Nope, that's, that's out in the, in the bay, about a, about a quarter mile from town. Uh, they just uh, pull their boats up again uh, the best they can. And then when they're done fishing, they just walk to town on the ice. <laughs> Uh, fishing requires a lot of dedication, right, and determination, especially if you're doing it in Greenland. Uh, what about uh, when you, you, it's impossible, everything is frozen solid. We've been there for a few years, uh, 16 years, and, and a couple times the bay has completely frozen all the way across, uh, and there's, you can't, obviously you can't, rock, you can't put a boat in the water. And, but then we have ice fishing. You can, hit, you can hit play on that one too. We have ice fishing. Now, you're gonna go ice fishing. You, uh, you take a snowmobile about an hour into the mountains, and you come to the ice fjord, and then you get on your dog sledge, and you take the dog sledge about an hour onto the ice to go uh, fishing. And sometimes you'll, you'll see the fishermen out there, you know, there's only one guy out there fishing all alone. You know, they're cold, right? <laughs> um, you know, it requires a lot of de de dedication and determination, and it's the same thing with fishing for men, right? We can make all kinds of excuses. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm tired, you know, I don't feel good, or, you know, it's cold outside. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, but it really, it's just laziness, isn't it? I mean, that's our responsibility as believers is to fish for men. Uh, once again, they're, they're not going to just get saved by accident. You know, uh, the people that get saved by accident is because they maybe they had a gospel track in their hand, right? There's something, right? Something, somebody had to do something, right? You know, leave gospel tracks everywhere you go. I, I just heard a story recently about that, you know? You never know. Uh, you know, give out gospel tracks, leave them everywhere. Uh, you do what you can to, to be a fisherman. You know, at your workplace, don't be afraid to talk to people about, about Christ when you, when you have the opportunities. Uh, you know, we're going to change the world. It's not going to be by getting the right politician, right? <laughs> uh, yes, we want the right politicians. We're, we're praying for the right politicians. But if we're going to really change the world, people have to be saved. When people get saved and start living the right way, then the world's going to change. They won't be able to stop that. No politician will be able to stop that, right? If people get saved, a revival. Uh, you know, you read about the revivals, you know, of the old days. Today we have revival and we've got to tell everybody, oh, we're having revival. <laughs> the revival of the old day. The old days, they, they just came, didn't they? There was no stopping them, and things would, would change. Old towns would change. Uh, the, the, the bars would close down, right? Uh, you know, it was just a change, a revival, a real revival that came through, amen? Uh, but, you know, I think about uh, fishing for men. You know, sometimes, you know, the, the, uh, we're talking about you know, being, being determined. You know, sometimes uh, si the situations change, right? 
Uh, I think about, uh, you know, the conditions changing. I think about COVID <laughs> uh, for several years, right? A lot of, man, there's a lot of uh, obstacles there to, to go through, right? Uh, but you know what? Th praise the Lord, you didn't close down. Praise the Lord, you didn't quit. Uh, there's some churches that we've been to that, man, they, they, they're almost, they pretty much, they pretty much quit during COVID and now they're suffering from it and, and it's hard for them, you know, they even get a crowd out the church. Uh, but you know, the conditions have always been changing. In 2,000 years, you know, the, the conditions, uh, you know, around the local church, <laughs> you know, there were, there were times where the church ha had to uh, meet in the forest. There were, there were times the church had to, had to hide, right? They met in homes. Uh, there, there was a time during the dark ages uh, where millions were martyred for, for, for Christ. There was a time where, where believers had to pay taxes to the state church. There was times their properties were taken from them by the state, state church, you know. Uh, but you know what? There's still a true church, right? We still look around today and we still see local churches that, that have always stayed true to the, to the Word of God. Amen. Always stayed true to Christ. Always stayed true to the doctrine. There's churches that have, that have kept going. Amen. Uh, conditions may change, but we have to keep on going, keep being determined, right? Amen. Amen. You know, I think about um, um, Hudson Taylor. You probably have heard of Hudson Taylor, a missionary uh, to China. Um, and uh, you know when he when he went to China, uh, there's there's a lot of missionaries at that time going to China. Most of them were from England. You know, uh, England was actually the first country that really had the, the foreign mission emphasis, He's sending missionaries to foreign countries. And um, you know there's a lot of missionaries going there. Well, Hudson Taylor came and he he started dressing like the Chinese, wearing his hair like the Chinese, uh, in his home. It looked like a native a native's home. But all the, all the people from England, you know, they, they were bringing all their stuff from England, right? Just making their house just like, it was like, just like it was a house from England. The ladies were wearing the nice, you know, dresses, long dresses, maybe silk and everything. And, and you know, all the, uh, all the nice things in their hair and everything. And, you know, and the, they, the other missionaries started seeing Hudson Taylor, you know, the way he, what he was doing, they got offended with him. Like, what, what's this guy doing? And, you know, the native people would go up to the, to the people from England wearing those fancy dresses, fancy clothes, and they would be touching them. Like, oh, wow, you know, just, just, uh, you know, just, just in awe at, at how beautiful and how, how nice the things were they were wearing. They'd be looking in their houses at all the nice stuff in their houses, you know. But then there was Hudson Taylor. He was sitting in the homes of the natives, right? Uh, the natives were sitting in his home, amen? And, uh, you know, we, we, you got, you've got to learn to adapt, right? And uh, that's what missionaries have been doing for years. You know, countries that are closed, missionaries know God's called them and God gets them into the countries because they don't quit, right? They're not lazy. <laughs> You know, just think about that. A lot of times people quit before the goal was even realized, right? Oh, this is too hard. I'm done. <laughs> you know, oh, I tried, I tried going out in visitation one time, but nobody, nobody responded. I'm done. <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't work that way, right? Uh, you need to keep going, amen? Uh, keep planting that seed. I mean, just think about, once again, I, I keep talking about, I'm thinking about my life as a pioneer missionary in Greenland. You know, it's been hard. <laughs> Uh, there, there weren't people waiting for us to arrive. There weren't people saying, oh, here comes a missionary. Let's get saved. No, it didn't happen that way, right? It was a lot of hard work. And it's the same in America. I used to talk about how bad Greenland was. Then I, I, the last couple times I've been back to America, I'm like, okay, I don't have to talk about how bad Greenland is anymore because you, America, you caught up very quickly, right? And uh, our society has changed greatly in America, hasn't it? And all around the world, it's changing. Uh, but uh, what time we have? Yeah, we have a few more minutes. Um, but fishing... Kind of got ahead of myself, but yeah. So sometimes you're lonely out there, right? And, and sometimes work of God is a lonely place to be in uh, because a lot of people just don't want to, they're just too busy, too preoccupied to, to get involved, right? Um, but fishing requires a lot of preparation and maintenance as well. Uh, Luke uh, chapter 14, we can turn there. Luke chapter 14. And verse number uh, 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Uh, here, uh, kind of the idea is there, there is um, you know, a lot of preparation and cost that goes in to, to serving the Lord, right? And Jesus is saying you need to count the cost, right? And that's what I think about fishing. If you, if you uh, are in Greenland, you see a boat out in the water bringing in the catch of fish, there was a lot of preparation that went into that. You know, it wasn't, it, it didn't just go out there and drop the, drop the line. There was a lot of preparation, a lot of things that happened before that happened. You know, uh, I've been in Greenland and I've been in the homes of fishermen and uh, the fisherman will be sitting, sitting there with his family and they're all 
they're all getting getting the uh, the line ready, putting putting the the short lines at, uh, on on the long line and putting the hooks on the on those short lines. You know, um, uh, you know, and then somebody has to of course bait the hooks. And a lot of times the fishermen will go out early in the morning and they'll find people sitting at, sitting around the harbor. You know, people are just uh, looking for work. They'll be sitting around the harbor and the fishermen say, hey, I'll pay you some money, help me, help me bait these hooks. A lot of work, a lot of preparation goes in before they can actually catch fish. And it's the same thing with missions, right? You see a missionary in Greenland, <laughs> that just didn't happen by accident, right? There's a lot of preparation that went into that. You know, a missionary, you know, when he first, when God first calls him, you know, uh, many missionaries go to Bible college, uh, of course, they're being trained maybe in their, in their local church. Hey, Amen. That's, that's a good way to go, right? In your local church, learn from your pastor, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but then the missionary uh, goes on deputation, raises support. Man, a lot of work involved, a lot of time, a lot of preparation. And churches start praying and supporting that missionary. And really, uh, you know, uh, obviously we, we need the financial money, but the prayer support. Don't ever underestimate that. You're, you're praying for your missionaries. Uh, money doesn't always uh, uh, move things, right? It doesn't get doors open, uh, doesn't, doesn't necessarily uh, save souls, but the praying of God's people, right? Uh, but a lot of preparation goes in uh, to, to reaching a country with the gospel. And uh, the Bible says in Romans again, it says, How shall they preach except they be sent? Somebody has to do the sending. And that's, that's you all here. That's a local church, right? A lot of work involved. And then there's also, uh, you think about missionaries coming back on furlough, <laughs> you know, up in Greenland. Fishing boats get damaged because uh, you can see in Greenland we have a lot of ice and uh, a lot of boats gets dam get damaged. Now the fisherman, that's his livelihood, right? So he wants to get that, those, the, his boat repair, repaired and back in the water so he can get back to fishing. Now think about missionaries, sometimes missionaries uh, you know, come back on furlough and we try to get rest, but a lot of times we're just on the road. But um, you know, a missionary needs, needs that rest, doesn't he? Needs the encouragement, fellowship with other believers. And we appreciate that, you know, just being with you all here today. We appreciate Pastor Knickerbocker and his family. Uh, made us feel welcome two years ago. Uh, we're almost done here. I'll just kind of move through these and then we'll be done here. But you, uh, anytime you see a, um, a boat with uh, seagulls around it, <laughs> that means the fisherman is bringing in his catch of fish, right? And, you know, I think you know where I'm going with this, right? Um, there's always opposition. And if you were to read the, the, the story of the parable of the sower and the seed, uh, what, what, who's the enemy there? The bird, right? The birds come and they snatch away the seeds. Snatch away the gospel before it gets into the heart of that, of that person, right? And, uh, you know, uh, there's opposition uh, with the, the devil, right? He's the, he's the bird in the, in the parable that Jesus gave us. The devil is the opposition. He's the one fighting us. And uh, he doesn't want us uh, to, to uh, you know, sow the gospel. Uh, you can't play on this one. You, you can see what it looks like. And this is ice fishing. Even the bird, the seagulls are there on the ice as well. Uh, I mean, they're just they're they're hovering around because we because we're cleaning the fish, and we're throwing the guts over in a pile, and they're just waiting for us, you know, to leave. Sometimes they'll get real over our heads, and, and you know, they're, and they're interfering with us. Uh, my friend told me that one time they were so hungry, the, the birds, they were coming down snatching the fish as he threw them out of the hole. And uh, one time he told me that his knife, we have a, of course we have a knife. That's a really really important tool for a fisherman, right? You need a knife to clean those fish. And he said his knife was laying there on the on the ground, and a seagull came down and ate the knife. <laughs> <laughs> a small, small, small knife, and flew away. And uh, so now he ties. When we're, as soon as he, if he puts a knife down, he ties it, ties it to something, so the birds can't take it away. Uh, but there's opposition in there, and uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna serve the Lord. You know I don't want to always blame it on the devil. Sometimes once again it's our flesh. We're just lazy. But if you determine you're gonna go out here and serve the Lord, you're gonna fish for men. You are gonna face opposition. There's gonna be a hundred reasons why you shouldn't go, why you shouldn't give out a gospel track, why you shouldn't uh, knock on a door. Uh, but we need to be ter determined again, right? Um, so much to say, uh, but just kind of uh, finishing up here. Fishing takes time, right? Uh, so we got to realize that, you know, you, you drop the line, uh, but then you come back, right? Uh, you come back. When you give out a gospel track, you, you talk to someone about Christ, you go back, right? Uh, it takes time. It takes time. I mean, how many times did you have to hear the gospel before you understood it? I mean, some people hear it the first time and they, they get it. Amen. That's, that's exciting. But a lot, of, a lot of people, they have to hear it. They've never heard anything like this before. In Greenland, they've never heard anything like this. They're, they have a state religion that teaches infant uh, uh, baptismal regeneration. When you're baptized as an infant, you're born again. So they already believe they're born again. They already believe they're Christians. And so we start telling them what the Bible says. You know, that's, this is something new. You know, and it takes a while for, them, for that to process, right? And then you've got keep, to gotta keep telling them it's the Word of God. The Word of God. Not traditions of men. Not the church. You know, and that's like, what? 
I told that somebody that before. They're like, like well, we're not supposed to listen to the church or the priest. I said, well, you, if they're not saying what the Bible says, yes, you don't listen to the church or the priest or the priest, right? Uh, you got to. The Bible is our authority. Amen. And we have to remember that. Uh, but then, uh, last thing is um, when you after you catch the fish, there's more work to be done, right? A lot of times, uh, you know, uh, you, you people, you know, you get someone to say it, make a profession of faith, and then we just let them go. Well, that's, that's, not, that's not fishing. Uh, Jesus said we're supposed to teach them, right, all things. What's what I, I have commanded you. And uh, when, you, when you catch the fish, right, we don't just leave them on the ground here. We clean them, right? <laughs> and that's, you know, how, you, how, do you get a, how do you get a soul clean? Well, they get saved, right? But then you start, they come to church, and you start teaching the Word of God, and, they, and what? God just starts cleaning them up, doesn't he? <laughs> all that old stuff starts falling away. Amen. If you don't show them that, they're not going to know what, what, what's right and what's wrong. You've got, you got to get the new believers into the Word of God. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, and then lastly, uh, fishing is a family business. And in Greenland, um, if you were to, to, uh, to come there, you would see that, um, you know, most people that are involved in fishing, their, their father and their, or their grandfather was involved in fishing. I mean, it's really a family business. And uh, now the children are getting involved in, in, in fishing. And uh, you know what? I think about... Uh, Jesus, at the age of 12, he was about his father's business, right, in the, in the temple, <laughs> amen, <laughs> teaching those, those scribes and right, those Pharisees, right, he was teaching the word of God as a 12-year-old, and I, I just think again about uh, the disciples, you know, how many of them were, were fishermen, right, uh, you know, they were, they were, they were partners, right, uh, in a business, the, the two brothers and then the other two brothers with their father, uh, but I, I said all that to say that uh, fishing is God's business, right, fishing for men, and uh, we all need to be about our father's business, so get out there and catch fish, amen? amen. And uh, while, we're, while you're catching fish here, we're catching fish in Greenland. Let's close in prayer.